Hi everybody, I'm Gwen and welcome to At Home with Gigi. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have you ever wanted to make a sign but you don't have a Cricut? Well, I don't have one either. So today I'm going to show you three different ways you can make signs without using a Cricut and they are so inexpensive and they're just gorgeous and I cannot wait to share them with you. So let's get started. Y'all, I am so excited to show you what I'm going to make with this scrap piece of plywood and these window clings from Walmart that only cost $1.98. I've had them in my collection for about two, three months now and I've been trying to decide and it finally came to me when I seen this piece of scrap wood and I can't wait to show you what I'm going to make. We're going to do the crackle effect on this piece of plywood and I've just mixed together some acrylic paint from Apple Barrel in the color Burnt Umber and I just took some plaster of Paris and mixed that with it until I got the consistency I was looking for. It's similar to chalk paint and it's a very easy way and cheap way to make chalk paint without buying all the different colors because it can really add up. But anyway, I'm just going to put a good base of this burnt umber down and then let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step. For this part, we're going to be using some Elmer School Glue, and we're also going to be using Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint and Linden White. And this that big container came from Amazon, and I'll try to remember to link it below. And I'm just using a pretty hefty amount, as you can see, and I am going to add more school glue. I'm going to completely cover the whole piece of wood in school glue and let that dry for probably about a minute to two minutes, and let it start to set up just a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with a layer of the white linen on top. Now to get the best crackle effect, you're going to want to limit the amount of times you go over the glue with your paintbrush. So I wouldn't go over it maybe two, three times at the most because the more you go over it, the more you mix the paint and glue and the effect is not so good. Um, this is my second, maybe third time doing this and it's still not perfect. I'm still working on getting the best effect as you'll see in just a couple of minutes but I love how it turns out, but I love one end way more than I do the other, as you can see right here. Now I have gone around the edges and just sanded off any of the excess paint that I got, the drips and things like that, just to make it look a little better. But I wish I knew what I did differently, because I just love that one end. Before Mod Podging the window clings to my sign, I wanted to make sure that I had my placement correct and where I wanted everything because I'm notorious for changing my mind so I just pulled it all off and was placing it down and I got to looking at it and I'm like eh that plastic's got to go I know it's plastic folks but so much plastic in between the letters and around the edges of the church so I did go ahead and just trim all of that up and it took a little bit of time but it was so so worth it as you'll see in the end it was very much worth the time and y'all, this sign was literally made for maybe three bucks. You'll see the extra little item I add at the end, but everything else I already had. The scrap piece of wood, the window clings were $2, and I think they were just so gorgeous and just such a high-end look. It, neutral colors is not for everyone at Christmas, because I, for one, love my bling and glitz. But this just called to me for some reason. I just, I don't know, but I just fell in love with it when I seen it hanging on the rack at Walmart. And I'm just using my ruler to try and keep everything straight. It didn't exactly happen with the last three letters because I bumped my ruler. I am very fat fingered, as you all know, and I'm using my little tweezers to try and help me keep it in place, but somehow I still bumped it. I don't think it's too noticeable. You'll have to tell me what you think, but I just put a layer of Mod Podge down and then I took my tweezers, placed my letter down, and then I just used cling wrap like I would with a napkin or tissue or something. And as you can see, I'm just dabbing and pressing, making sure I get any of the excess Mod Podge out. 
and then just making sure all of the edges are pushed down and really attached. I decided instead of using the ampersand to use the star instead between peace and joy, I really like that so much better because it just looked a little odd to me. And I just think this went so well with my sign. Put down another layer of Mod Podge, putting my church down, and then I'm just going to smooth it out and just press it around the edges, making sure I get all that excess Mod Podge out, because I did put a pretty heavy layer of Mod Podge, so I want to make sure this sticks to my board. Now, after everything was dry with the liquid Mod Podge, I did take it outside and I sprayed it really well with spray Mod Podge just to get that extra layer of protection and make sure nothing comes loose. I really felt that I was finished. And then I got to looking at it in the section by the church, I just thought that it needed something else. And I'm taking this gift bag from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut out these little black trees, it looks like little stick trees, and I'm gonna Mod Podge those in that area there by the church. Sing all your citizens of heaven above Glory to God in the highest Come let us adore Him Come let us adore Him Come let us adore Him now I'm just using just a tiny bit of this glue stick just to hold the trees in place because I'm going to use that iron-on method to make these trees um, adhere to my board and whenever I put down that layer of Mod Podge for the church I put a very generous layer and there was plenty left over but again I'm just using the glue stick just to hold the trees in place not as a permanent hold just to keep them in place so they don't move around when I'm going over them with my iron. And yes, I know one tree looks like it's up in the air, so just bear with me. You'll see what I'm gonna do in just a moment to fix that. Now in flesh appearing, come let us up. The third tree that was there, I'm just cutting it down into pieces, and then as you can see, I'm just making the tree a little bit taller. Y'all, I am so proud of this sign. I just love it using window clings because I've said it before, I don't have a Cricut. I don't know if I could even use one. I'm not very technical. And I just, I love being able to create signs without using a Cricut and just see the different things that I can use. So tell me down below, do you have a Cricut or do you try to find alternatives to creating signs and using words without using a Cricut? What do y'all think? Do you think the trees were just the extra little touch that it needed? I think so. It really needed something in that corner right there. And I am just loving this. It's not something that I normally make. It's very neutral and very simple. But I love this piece and I really feel that I could use this into the winter. And for maybe three, four dollars, that's all it costs to make this sign. I'm just using a piece of scrap wood. If you don't have the wood already on hand, you would have to either buy the wood or use a couple of the long signs from the Dollar Tree. I did take a poll from my daughters and my sisters to if I should add a bow. So I guess you can see who won. There was more 
add a bow than not add a bow and so I decided to just make a little quick messy bow again with ribbon that I already had and then I just took a, one of those little wooden stars that you get in those packs from the Dollar Tree it's gold and I just painted it white and added it to the center of the bow I really think it looks good but I just could not decide if it needed a bow or not so I pulled my sisters and my daughters and it was five of them all together so Four of them said yes to the bow, one said no. Y'all, we are going to make one of the easiest, most inexpensive signs there ever was. Not really, but you get the point. I'm just gonna use this wood round from the Dollar Tree you've seen. I paid $3 for it. And I'm just gonna start by giving it a one coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. Once the paint is dry, you can go in and add your layer of Mod Podge and then just set your wood round aside and just let it dry completely. For our next step, we're going to take a plain white napkin and we're just going to tape it onto a sheet of printer paper. And you want to get this napkin as snug around the sheet of paper as possible because we're going to print the design that we're going to use for our wood round onto this white napkin. And I'm using masking tape. You can use whatever tape you want, but like I said, you want to get it as snug as you possibly can to keep it from jamming up in your printer. Been there, done that. But as you can see, I didn't get it exactly snug. I did try to fix it a little bit with the tape, but you do want to make sure it's as snug as possible. And we're going to be using an inkjet printer to print our design. And the design came from my daughter's Etsy shop, Cozy Art Print Company, and I'll have her link down below. And isn't this gorgeous? Oh my gosh, y'all, I love it. I thought it was so beautiful. I cannot wait to show you what it looks like on our wood rim. I'm just trimming around the edges of the napkin to remove it from the paper and the tape because I want to make sure I do not tear it. As you can see, it's so thin. I'm going to use a tiny paintbrush and water to remove the excess napkin. Now you can use scissors or you can just leave it as it is, whatever you prefer. I just like the effect that this gives. You do want to take your time and just be gentle and do it just a little bit at a time because as you saw, this napkin is very, very thin. It's because this is the backing of a three-ply napkin and I love to do this. I've just recently started doing this in the last couple of months and I've been practicing a lot because I've been doing a lot of napkin challenges so I have a lot of backings to use and to play with and I just I love it. I think it is so pretty and you can make your own creations. Again my daughter designed this but if you're good at doing things like that then by all means or Go to Etsy and for a couple of bucks purchase such beautiful designs and it's just so much fun. Because the napkin is so thin and the colors are just so vivid, you really could reverse the direction of your deer if you wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and line my deer up along the bottom edge of my sign and we are going to use the iron-on method to adhere our napkin to our surface. And y'all, if you've never done this before, it is just the most amazing thing. I just love it because it gives such a nice, clean, smooth finish. No wrinkles, no bubbles, nothing. It is just wonderful. I'm using parchment paper here and I've just recently switched to that from wax paper and I like it much better. But anyway, I just start in the center of my napkin on my paper and just smooth all the way out. 
and you have your iron on the very lowest setting and you just work your way all the way around until you make sure you have all the edges adhered to your surface and you can see my wax paper did stick just a bit it's because I put so much Mod Podge on there and not a lot of napkin but look at that isn't it gorgeous I love it so I'm just using my little finger sander and just going around the edges and just getting off that little bit of excess napkin I'm just using some white Waverly chalk paint and a little sponge you can get from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going around the edges of the napkin and just kind of blending that in with the wood round and also where I added that layer of Mod Podge just a little bit shiny in some areas so I'm also just kind of going over that just to make it look a little better. I just want to say a great big thank you to all of my new subscribers and my returning subscribers. Thank y'all so much for supporting my channel and for subscribing to my channel. I truly, truly appreciate it. If you're here and you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button while you're there is completely free. And guys, it really helps my channel to grow. I'm getting closer and closer to that thousand mark. And once I get there, I'm going to do a $100 Amazon gift card gift away so please make sure that you are subscribed I'm going to use these vinyl decals that came from Amazon and I'll link them below y'all I love them they're such high quality and if you do not own a Cricut which I do not and I'm always looking for ways to be able to add words to my projects and this is just such a perfect and they're so easy to use I'm just cutting them down to the size that I want and I'm just taking this little wooden stick and just rubbing over the entire word making sure that I get all of the letters transferred onto that front piece of the plastic because you're going to peel the back piece off and if I'm not explaining that very well you'll see in just a moment what I'm going to do. And I'm just peeling that back part off very very slowly make sure that I've got the, all the letters on that front piece of the plastic and then I'm just going to get my placement just right and just like that and then you just use you can use your fingernail you can use the little stick there whatever is easiest and just rub over it a minute or so you don't really even have to do it that long but just until you're sure that and you can usually tell by the color of the letter where it has transferred onto your surface I just love these and I love my sign the only thing I wish I had done differently I wish I had put the word peace in the center it's just like it didn't even dawn on me to do that until after I had finished I'm like oh my gosh it should have went in the center because it was the bigger word but anyway as you can see you just peel it off just I peel mine off very slowly just to make sure I'm not gonna rip anything up and it's that easy and they stay on so well. I've used them on ornaments, I've used them on a napkin, um, just different surfaces and it, they just stay and they work so well. I am having so much fun printing designs on napkins and choosing what I want to go on a napkin because sometimes you can't find just what you want and I love it, it's just so much fun. If you've tried it before, let me know, comment down below and tell me how it turned out. After I had finished adding the words, I just took it outside, give it a good spray of the Mod Podge just to seal everything in, and that's it. I just think it turned out so gorgeous. I went back and forth trying to decide if I wanted to add some beads or greenery, but I'm glad I didn't. I love it just the way it is. Y'all, I almost did not put this DIY in this video because unfortunately I have lost the first half of this project and I'm so sorry about that. But what I did, I had one of the thicker poster boards from the Dollar Tree. I wrapped it with white paper and we're making a large sign to put on your wall. And this is the perfect way if you need something inexpensive and quick and Christmassy. And I just took some leftover ribbon that I've had from a couple of years ago from Walmart and hot glued that around my sign and then I made a couple of bows the larger one I'm hot gluing it down now and then I made the smaller one I'm just going to hot glue that on top of the larger bow and I just popped one of the silver bells from the Dollar Tree 
And like I said, it virtually cost me nothing to make this. You just use whatever leftover ribbon that you have, and then a poster board and some white. I chose white wrapping paper. You can use any color, and because I wanted it to coordinate with my ribbon. But I love it. And then using some greenery that came from the Dollar Tree from last year. And I'm just so sad that I didn't have all the footage to show you, but I love the sign. And I'm like, you know what? I have got to show you just the end, at least the end part of it, so you can see how I finished it off and just see how easy and inexpensive it is to create something so gorgeous. And you can use whatever colors that you are decorating with for Christmas. I made this sign because I needed something to go on my dining room wall and I really did not want to go out and spend more money on another sign. And y'all, I had everything on hand already so I did not have to purchase anything. I'm going to use this Merry Christmas sign from the Dollar Tree. It has serious fallout from the glitter but I just sprayed it really well with the Mod Podge, let it dry and then I'm just gonna hot glue it to the front of my sign. Y'all, I think this turned out so pretty and it's just a great way to create a large sign or very inexpensive with things that you already have on hand. Thank y'all so much for being here. I hope everybody is having an amazing holiday season, a very Merry Christmas and a happy and safe New Year's to you. And I look forward to bringing you more videos in the new year. And thank y'all again for all your love and support this year. And I will see you soon. Bye.